stop share. There we go. All right. So now I think we're good. So, you know, we'll get started here. Um, I mean, I know the meeting is being live streamed on YouTube as well as here on Zoom. We have a good number of attendees. If you do have a question as we're going through this, please, please, please type it into the, the Q&A section of Zoom. We will get to as many of them as we can today. Um, but what I'll do is any unanswered questions, because I know both Steve and I are crazy busy. Um, <laughs> so if we run out of time, we don't get to them. I will answer the questions, the unanswered questions on a Word document and include that in the email to all the registered attendees after the event later on today. That way all your questions still get answered. It just may not happen live. So watch for that email later this afternoon um, that will have the link on YouTube to the replay of the video so you can share with the rest of the people in your office, as well as, again, any unanswered questions we don't get to. So <clears throat> good there. But I want to you know just take a minute and thank uh, Steve, for joining us this morning. I know you guys have been crazy busy, but for those of you who don't know, um, Steve Roberts is the, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, the chief executive officer, the CEO of Vine. Um, so it's not just Vine Dental, there's also Vine Medical. He's over all of Vine's, the CEO which is a stressful position, I'm sure even more so the past few weeks. Um, but Steve actually is a 25-year veteran in the dental industry. He has been a practice manager. Uh, he was the global vice president of product strategy for Shine One. And now, as I said, he is the CEO of Vine. So, you know, first, Steve, I want to just thank you for taking the time to join us. Like I said, I know it's crazy. No. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here with you today. Rick. Honestly, at, when, when I when I learned we were going to talk, I thought, why haven't we done this already? We should do this a long time ago. <laughs> I, but nothing like an emergency to bring people together. Exactly. <laughs> and then, you know, before we even get into it, I'm going to go off script a little here. <laughs> I don't know if you saw, did you see the letter from OCR yesterday? I, the, I didn't. The Office of Civil Rights has stated they are starting a formal investigation to determine if there was a breach in the cyber attack at Change Healthcare. Yeah. So, you know, that that's it's, a whole nother topic that I'm probably yeah. probably going to be what the Drive Live video on tomorrow is. Um, but anyway, for those of you joining us who don't know what Vine is, I don't know how you're a member of my Facebook group and don't know what Vine is, but Vine is the clearinghouse that we use here in my office for all of our clients across the country to send claims, electronic attachments. They do verifications. They do uh, forms and all kinds of things. We'll talk about a little bit of that later on, but we use them. It's the only company I tell people to use when anybody asks in the group, who do we use? And that's because I've honestly been using them forever. I mean, I was using Remote Light, which was owned by Renaissance. And then, you know, Vine purchased Renaissance, purchased Remote Light. We switched over to that, then Vine Trellis, and it's just grown and grown. And, you know, if you're going to ask me who to use, that's who I'm going to tell you, because number one, I know it works because I use it personally on a daily basis. And number two, I've been using it forever. And I know it does exactly what we in a dental office need it to do. So if you're going to ask, that's why I'm going to tell you, I've been using them forever. And I mean, back way back in the day when we were using, you know, EagleSoft version seven, we were using remote light, which is now Vine, um, Vine Trellis. We were using that. So I've been using it forever. I've been recommending them since I started speaking in like 2011. I've been recommending them ever since. So, you know, that's, that's why, but you know, the more important thing is we are here today to talk about the incident. That's what I'll call it. <laughs> the incident about change healthcare. Um, and, you know, I am still, honestly, I'm amazed 
I'm still getting messages from people saying, hey, we use EagleSoft and we can't send claims through our system. What's going on? I'm like, you, you must have been under a rock for the past <laughs> three weeks to not know exactly what's going on. Um, but people don't know. Change Healthcare had a cyber attack. Um and it shut down, or I guess they shut down all of their systems after the cyber attack. Um, you know, at this point, I think most of the softwares have formed other relationships. And that's really something I wanted to talk to you about because Change Healthcare was a, a pretty big player. You know, I'll say one of the three or four big players in the country as far as claims and clearing houses and so on and so forth. How, how have you guys responded to their shutdown? Because this this has been huge national news. Yeah, it's interesting because the the dental business within Change Healthcare, um, from a Change Healthcare point of view, is actually quite small relative to the size of all of Change Healthcare. You know that this the cyber attack didn't just impact dentistry. Um, it brought almost the entire e-prescribe uh, system nationwide down as part of that. And, you know, Change Healthcare over the years has done a really great job of creating clearinghouse services that practice management vendors primarily use to connect their embedded e-claims products with the payers. Um, I was joking with Teresa that clearinghouses and even just revenue cycle management on the insurance side in dentistry is a little bit like a sausage factory. Like you don't really want to know how it's all made, like how your claims actually get there. It's, it, it can be quite complicated because of the different file formats and the, you know, all the management practice management vendors have different versions of how they submit claims and change did a really good job at normalizing that for payer consumption. And then also dealing with non-standard, um, uh, interfaces with the payers as well. And so the reality is, is there's three dental clearing houses. Um, Change Healthcare, generally speaking, had mostly exclusive agreements with the practice management vendors to process claims. And it's been like that for quite some time. And then you have companies like Vine and Dental Exchange, where we're also clearing houses, um, but we also have direct provider solutions where Change Healthcare did not. They were relying on the practice management vendors. And so, you know, for us at Vine, it really didn't affect us or our customers because we have an end-to-end -end platform. We have the provider product and we have the clearinghouse connections. And we we talk about like our strategy is to be an all-payer, all clearinghouse platform. And what that essentially means is we have connectivity direct to all the payers, but we also have connectivity to everyone else that has connectivity to the same pay uh, payers. So that allows us to route claims different directions depending on what's going on. So um, the change healthcare incident didn't impact us from a product point of view. What it impacted us from is we, we saw an onslaught, an unpredictable uh, swarm of customers coming through our, our sales model. And um, the reality is, and uh, Rick, here's, here's, here's the reality of the situation. I have been in dentistry since 1996 and I've watched Windows-based practice management come. I've watched digital radiography come. I've watched patient engagement systems come. I've watched all sorts of innovation come. I've never seen anything where a company had to onboard 10,000 customers in 10 days. And yeah, that's nice. what, and that's what we've done. And that's why our hold times are where they are. I mean, we, our response to this is we can get you on trellis. Um, we're doing our best to move them through, but, but the reality is, is claims are flowing. With, with our with our products, with remote light, with fast attach, with vine trellis. Um, we're helping the eligibility and benefit verification services with our wonderful platform. I think we brought on 10 uh, new aggregators of eligibility and benefit verification over the last week. Um, to, like, so, and the reality is this change healthcare is deeply embedded in dentistry on both the provider and payer side. The reality is I don't think we have fully experienced the, the ramifications of this. I I mean, we're just talking <laughs> about ramifications. I, I think this is kind of twofold 
because, you know, number one, we're seeing the ramifications now with our clients because we use, we've always used Vine. So we didn't have any issues submitting claims or getting paid. We had no shutdowns with that. But the problem we're having now is checks, EOBs, because there's a lot of insurance companies who used another side of change to process their EOBs and their EFTs and their ERAs and, you know, get and their mail EOBs. and their inbound printed claims. So a lot of practices said, oh, no problem. I'll just print all my claims. Where do you think those were going? They were going, <laughs> everybody thinks they were going to, you know, the okay, insurance mail company. Room and, and the insurance companies, a lot of them outsource them, their mailroom function where they take the mail, they extract it, they digitize it, they uh, normalize it and feed it in like an electronic claim. That So the reality here is, uh, I did want to like give one tip. If, if people are still having issues submitting claims, the best thing to do in the short term would be to go to a portal and submit it directly to the payer. Uh, printing and mailing is just getting in the same backlog line for many of these payers as holding your claims. I, I don't want to go back to 1999. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I, I don't want to have to print and mail claims anymore. Like you said, I would much rather go to the portal, do them there if I can. You know, I but I know like, we haven't had any issues for our clients submitting the claims. We're seeing a no. slowdown on checks on incoming payments because so many insurance companies used change in order well, to do that true. processing, which kind of leads me to my second slow down area. I don't know that change is going to be able to recover from this. You know, I mean, we were, I was actually at in Chicago with Teresa last week on Thursday at the, at the SCDT code committee meeting. And we were having that same discussion. And she said, this is, this is what I'm talking, been talking about on every, every webinar, every live I've done is are they going to be able to recover even? I mean, they've lost so much trust. There's now open Office of Civil Rights investigations. You know, and it's like you said, it's not just dental. It's the the e-prescription processes. It's the insurance companies farming out their ERAs and EFT payments and processing and even their lockbox processing. That's all changed. They've they've lost so much faith from people. Like there is no trust left with them. I don't, I don't know if they're going to be able to recover. Yeah, it's, it, it is quite unfortunate. This is, it's hard for me to see a path back to pre-226 right. <laughs> for, 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 for them or, or anyone for that matter, because Everyone had to scramble to reroute their claims. The aggregators had a leg up because they could make a single new connection to a clearinghouse, or maybe in some cases they had a connection either to Tasia, our clearinghouse or dental exchange, and they were just redirecting traffic to it. Right. But the reality is, is even if you aggregated all these claims and redirected it, there still has to be work when, when it comes to EDI enrollment. When it comes to ERA enrollment, you know, some insurance companies require that you specify who your clearinghouse is before they'll accept claims from you. So for and some don't let you, you know, this enroll before you submit the claims. You have to do it once you've submitted the claims. And so there's a lot of long tail unplugging and replugging that has to happen when you when you switch these systems. And um, once that's done, going back is the same effort. So if change were to come back online, all of this special enrollment that's switched from change to some other clearinghouse will have to be switched back. For that reason alone, if I'm running change healthcare right now, that's the question I'm asking, because can we actually come back from this to the way that was? And I, I, I have a hard time seeing that play out um, anytime soon. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I mean, I've, you know, we deal with that because, like I said, there are certain insurance companies, the state Medicaid programs that when we bring on a new client, we know they participate with Medicaid. We have to submit a couple claims, wait, then get the form 
the enrollment form, you know, we just call mine, get the enrollment form. They send it to us. We fill it out. Doc signs it. We send it back. Everything is good. Takes a day and it's over. That's, that's been the process. And like you said, if you're going to do that now, okay, you're switching to Vine and then, okay, now we're, I don't know, two months out and change says, Hey, we're back up. Are you going to want to fill all that back out again? And it's not just state Medicaid's it's, if you're accepting ERAs and you're getting your ERA reports through your, you know, through Vine or through Change or through whoever, all of those have to be re-signed. And people think, well, I already signed it a year ago for Change. You have to reassign that now to Vine. And are you really going to want to now do it a third time to go back to Change? Not knowing i mean and listen I, i'll be 100 percent honest and i mean i'm steve you know this anybody can be hacked at any time it's just a question of and you know in the hippo world we talk about security and layers and i mean the the big problem and this is the big problem i see for change and i don't know how into the tech side you get but they were told the issue that they were having with their screen capture software. That's what enabled the hack was their screen capture software. Yeah. They were told the version they were using had a vulnerability in it that could potentially lead to a hack months before the hack happened. And they chose, in my opinion, chose not to act on it. And that that's a huge issue. You know, that's it, it really is. I mean, the reality is to be in this business because of the volume of PHI that we handle, um, we go through significant layers and levels of penetration testing, sort of annual certifications for security and compliance from SOC 2 to ENAC to high trust. All of us do it. Right. And you, you know, any clearinghouse, any payer, we all go through it, including change. And so, like, that's the reality of these certifications is they they flag the things that you have to fix they warn you about the things you should should fix and they give you green light on everything else that seems to be okay and it's a cat and mouse game it always has been you know we we address vulnerabilities and new ones come up as you know creative people find ways around the the doors and locks right um right but i mean i really you know, I, I kind of want to go back to what you were saying about, you know, bringing on 10,000 new offices in 10 days. I mean, that's, that's huge. I mean, I've been, you know, it was, it was when it was still Renaissance, but I actually came out and did a tour and some, some live videos from, you know, the remote light Renaissance headquarters back when it was all superhero themed. Um yeah. And, you know, seeing the people there knowing, you know, a thousand people a day to bring on a thousand offices is huge. I mean, that just, that's mind boggling to me. So I understand that your original plan was we're going to get them on, we're going to get them sending claims and then kind of later on, we're going to roll them out into the other the other features, because listen, cash flow is king in any business. And that flow has already been impeded by not being able to send claims for whatever amount of time you weren't. So get that fixed. Where where are you guys now? Are, are you still, because it's a huge number, are you still, let's get claims going and then we'll roll out yeah, yeah, that's a great question because really there's there's layers of how the Vine Trellis platform works. At the core of the system is it's a it's an insurance billing platform. And so there's like push and pull services, integrators that get claims out of management systems into Trellis for our validation, attachment flagging, and all the pre-processing work. That's what we're focusing on right now is let's get, get people onto the core trellis functionality for submitting claims and attachments. There's a question here. Attachments and claims are all processing fine. We're not seeing any slowdown in payer connectivity and routing. There's We actually don't deliver attachments to, to payers. Just to be clear, we host them for payers and they come to our system to, to view. 
um, those x-rays. So there's no issues with um, attachments not being accepted by payers that I don't know where that rumor came from. It's from our perspective, it's not true. Um, and, you know, NEA is the original attachments clearinghouse and we do more right. than anyone else. I'm pretty confident in that answer. But the next level of, and you can do real-time eligibility in Charles uh, right now, the next level of integration would be automation. So this is where we're syncing the patients and the patient balances and the practice schedule. And we're automating the insurance verification on a daily basis. We're interacting with patients via text message to update insurance when it doesn't when it doesn't pass the auto check where we have the mobile pay functionality where you can do your e-billing out of trellis where you're sending text and email messages to patients to collect balances those are all phase two right. um, onboarding and training and then the third one is we've we recently partnered with pearl to provide image syncing technology where it connects to the local uh, imaging server syncs it to the cloud so you can one click attach x rays, intraoral x rays to claims where they're necessary. That's another phase. And so we've kind of we've told our customers, look, let us get everyone through sending claims and attachments, doing real time eligibilities. Then we'll go through the process of in helping with the install of the syncing tools uh, to really get Pelos into its intended state, which is full automation with exception workflows for for the front office biller right which is which is fantastic because you know i'm personally i'm always amazed because it seems like every other week i'm getting an email from my contacts at vine saying hey we have this new feature we have this new feature we're adding this new feature and i mean literally for me it's gone from sending claims and attachments you know nea <laughs> NEA yeah. fast attach <laughs> and, fast touch, and yeah. you know, remote light and then the screen capture and all that to, I mean, it literally does every, verifications, live chat. You guys have an online scheduling module now. I know forms, um, because that's always a big question people ask about forms is like, does it write back into EagleSoft? If somebody fills a form, is it going to go back in and i just recently found out i ne I never thought it did i just found out it does it yeah we have bi bi-directional integration with the major practice management vendors so dentrix and open dental and eaglesoft we absolutely have real-time bi-directional integrations with those systems um, for the long tail of smaller practice management systems uh, that have uh, they don't have apis they're small customer bases we do um, claim integration so we can get claims out of those systems uh, when it comes to the in advanced automation features like patient communication, patient engagement, practice marketing. That's all part of the Vintrell suite. Those are services that that are, have we've not yet integrated with the smaller practice management brands. Um, but when we look at the core of what we're trying to do is get people paid faster, right? That's the core, like that is our mission we are big believers that in order to do that, there needs to be a strong union between traditional revenue cycle management products like insurance, claim processing, attachment, eligibility, patient billing, payment processing, and the patient communication flows. And so that's why like, I, I never aspired to have this necessarily a patient engagement portfolio as much as it's really important in getting offices paid. So all of the pre-appointment that we work through automation ensures that claims get paid on the first pass. And the number one reason for a denied claim is the member was ineligible for the services because they're no longer covered right. by that in insurance carrier. That's all stuff that should be discovered long before we're creating a claim. And that's, you know, those are the types of problems we're trying to solve with our, with our PMS integrations and our patient communications is where we know Claims get pended, get rejected, get adjusted. Um, those are areas where we can deploy our engagement solutions to get new information um, right. to update those flows. And so um, I think that we'll probably be in a place within, I don't know, four weeks realistically to start bringing on the full automation. Uh, is our backlog right now for, for onboarding requests is still a, around 500 to 1,000 per day. Wow. That's, 
I mean that and and just to kind of put that into perspective for offices, if your dental office normally sees 20 patients a day, that's like you guys having 10 days in a row of 200 patients a day. That's right. Imagine how behind your hygienists are going to be. It's not going to be they're running behind five minutes. It's going to be they're running behind hours and days. <laughs> they're, oh, when did you go home? Three in the morning. When did you go back to work? 4 a.m. You know, and I know I've been in contact with a number of different people at Vine. I mean, I was Facebook messaging two Vine employees last <laughs> night at 1130. Oh, yeah. And, you know, back up this morning at seven o'clock and I'm getting my my responses again first thing. So, like, I know they are working super hard, you know, just just kind of put that into perspective for everybody in a dental office. Multiply the number of patients that you are seeing a day by 10. And imagine how far behind you'd be. Be a little patient. And in addition to being patient with Vine, be patient with if you're calling Dentrix or your EagleSoft customer service, if you're calling the PTC, asking questions of them, well, who do I use for e-prescribe or who am I going to use for this? Be patient with them as well, because this also isn't their fault. And, you know, I've heard stories of reps working for the, you know, Dentrix for Shine, working for um, at the PTC, being screamed at and harassed and belittled. And it just doesn't make any sense to me. So just kind of be kind to everybody. This is this is one of those events that will go down in history, you know, kind of like COVID that, you know, this like shut things down and caused so many changes in not just our industry, but pharmaceuticals, you know, and, you know, insurance companies and processing and lockbox changes. Th this is going to change a lot. So, yeah, you know, and, you know, it's one of the things that I think has come out of this that should be a lesson. You know, we got into this situation because we allowed closed systems and single point of failure processes to run dentistry. Right. Um, you know, so we're big believers that we should have disaster recovery plans. And, you know, if, if claims can't flow through X, we need another way to do it. That's not how we've been oper operating as an industry, generally speaking. Um, and so I think this will force the conversations around um, the importance of multiple clearinghouse relationships. You know, I think any system, and this isn't just because Chellis already does it. I think any claims product should have multiple connections to route those claims. Because to your point earlier, Rick, this could have happened to anyone. I wonder, like, when people say we should be out there talking about, I'm like, no, we shouldn't, because this could have happened to us. It could have happened to Dump Change. It could happen to Intershine. Could it, and it does. And so, yeah. you know, the point here is it's a cat and mouse game. You never know when it's going to strike. And so we should be ready for those types of things by providing options to our customers. And that that's always been my biggest issue with a number of the softwares, a number of the companies out there is we have, you know, A, the single point connections, but B, these exclusivity contracts of, well, if you're going to use our software, the only clearinghouse you can use is this one, or the only company you can use for patient communication is this one. Well, A, you're creating a very controlled environment, but B, what if one of them has an issue? Now I'm locked in. What if they don't offer a service that I want? I can't switch because I'm locked in. And I that 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 has always bothered me when when companies do that. So I really hope this does serve as a lesson to those companies that 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 system doesn't work. You know, you can't you can't rely on and this is what I what I have told my son since he was 5 years old who's now 25. 
you know, don't ever rely on one source for anything. Don't get your news from one source. Don't rely on, you know, one source of revenue, of income stream. Everything should be multiple layers. And when you count on just that one way of doing something, if something blocks that one way, you know, I go to the Outer Banks every other year for vacation in North Carolina. There is one road into the outer <laughs> into the outer banks. You can sit for four hours to go a mile and a half down that road because there's one way. If they just built a second or third way into the, the outer banks the other direction, it would alleviate so much of that flow. But that's doesn't yeah. <laughs> doesn't often doesn't often happen. Um, you know, so I mean we're we're and, and already by the way i want to like, like maybe one last comment on that the reality here is everyone that's in the claim processing business whether they're front end clearing house or payers got caught flat-footed here like no one expected something like this to happen rick and the re i i think to your point everyone is trying their best to restore services and i do i, I think the the partnership that we formed with Patterson was needed to happen anyway. This is a good forcing function for us to say, let's, let's, let's put the customer first here and figure out how, how we help them get their claims processed and cash flow moving. That said, I think the other practice management vendors have done a good job of reestablishing connectivity. Um, you know, we're processing a lot of attachments for these, you know, for example, Henry Shine and, 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 NEA Vine have always had a, a good working relationship around the attachment business. Um, so, you know, from what I can tell, most of the practice management systems that aggregate their claims are coming back online and claims are yeah. starting. They have a, a huge backflow of claims that were, you know, that were batched up and they're starting to flow um, and, and they're doing their best to restore services totally. Right. Um, but there's, there's still some work to, to happen there. Um, and so I you know I'm not I'm not suggesting necessarily that everyone should immediately make this their number one prior, priority to diversify because they're still trying to get the the I, main route. But I right. do think like let's let's not lose sight of what got us into this situation was this single threaded point of failure for almost the entire or at least half half the industry. Mm -hmm. um, and we can do better. We should do better. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, before I know we're already over our time and I know there's always things on the schedule, but I just want to try and get through two or three of these questions here real quick. Yep. Um, Lisa says, if if you're saying we should not print and mail claims, what's the best way to get our claims set and processed? If, if your practice management software hasn't, and I think both Dentrix and EagleSoft, you know, I mean, Open Dental, it's not been an issue because they're open to everybody. Yep. But, you know, Dentrix and EagleSoft have already switched their clearing houses over. Dentrix went with Dental Exchange using NEA to process the attachments. Um, EagleSoft has gone with Vine. So that move has already been made. You should see now that you're processing your claims normally either way. Um, if you don't, Absolutely. Or if you have had change healthcare, we couldn't get change healthcare directly. But, you know, yeah. if you are looking to yeah, on the switch clearing houses, yeah, I mean, Lisa, now is the time to to do that. So those claims keep getting sent out. Yeah. So I just want to like mention something about EagleSoft. You do have to install a Vine Trellis integrator. Um, so if they log into EagleSoft and just start trying to send claims again, that's not going to work. You actually have to do a programmatic install it's not hard it's like it's quite frankly like installing a printer right a workstation. <laughs> right. it's it's not hard to do uh, people get a little bit you know scared of i have to install something but but once you're once you've registered your account with trellis installed the integrator you should be able to process claims attachments no no problem right um, and you are right um with with how shine and, and other aggregators you know curve was processing through change i believe care stream you know there's Pretty much everyone, right. all the practice management vendors have have either brought in a point a front end like EagleSoft did with Vinchellis, or they've reconnect on the back end to our clearinghouse or dental exchange. Right. And one thing I do want to mention just real quick, 
if you have EagleSoft, if you just go to vinedental.com slash EagleSoft Reg, R-E-G, like registration, but just R-E-G, that will give you contact All info. Steps. You'll get right to the the step-by-step process. It'll walk you through everything. So if you have EagleSoft, it's not like Dentrix switched everything on the back end. So you don't right. even see anything. EagleSoft, you kind of have those couple steps that you have to walk through and it's not bad. I mean, it takes a few minutes, but you get through it and then you're good to start submitting your claims yeah. again. Yeah, we actually, just to be clear, we timed it. So we took the registration all the way through to first send. If you follow the instructions, register, go into your welcome email, reset your password, log in, download the integrator, go into EagleSoft, change a couple of settings and send it takes about 10 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, it's not bad. I mean, my, my operations team does it for every new client that we bring on that has EagleSoft. You know, we, we do it. And it used to be that we had to call and schedule an appointment and then a tech would call and then we'd remote them in. This process is so much easier. We can, we can be onboarding clients in minutes instead of well we have to call and get a tech scheduled and they're four days out because they're super busy right if you have eagle soft we're doing it ourselves that's right real real quick yeah. now so i i appreciate the new the new process for that yeah, and by so the way so the, the evolution of that process is like i said we have the claims integrator that's download you're good to go on the workstation the next phase is the pms integrator that will also be deployed the same way. So it was a high touch onboarding experience previously. You will be able to download your PMS sync on your database server, configure it, and your eligibilities will start automatically checking. Um, those types of things will automatically start. We expect to have that self install for the PMS sync done the end of this week and available for customers next that, week. That is amazing. I mean, that, that'll be huge, but so, an anonymous member said, do you anticipate any potential delays in claims processing with Vine due to the influx of new companies joining the platform? Will the surge affect processing time? I know Steve will probably have an answer, but I will tell you, <sighs> it's not, you know, you have to realize this isn't somebody is sitting in Vine's office somewhere going, send the claim, send the claim, send the claim, send the claim. This is all happening electronically. So once those clients, and please correct me if I'm wrong, are actually onboarded and installed, the actual backend kind of sending of the claims is just electronically done. And it it, it doesn't totally matter right. if you're doing one a minute or 45,000 a minute, it's, it's just happening. That's right. Yeah. So, so I mean, we certainly have real-time claim processing in our platform. Um, and there's, you know, inbound, you know, payers can only accept so many concurrent connections. But right. everything else goes in batch send. So every, you know, whatever, 15 minutes, we wake up and say, let's send a batch to MetLife. So there, there is no, and that's how it was before this. There, there's really no processing issues with the claims. Where there might be slowdowns is on the payer reimbursement side, because they're handling a lot more paper right. than they were previously. And, right. and I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of those, we never received your claim. Uh, responses from payers. Uh, anytime you go into paper, the mail rooms, things for whatever reason get lost. Right. Um, I'm not going to comment on it, but it's it's real. Yeah. Oh yeah. No. It it definitely definitely happens. Um, Lisa, you have Dentrix. You're good. You know, just to address that next question real quick. You're good. Dentrix has switched over to Dental Exchange on the back end for the claims processing to NEA for attachments. That's all happened on the back end. You're good to go. You should start seeing all of those processing if you haven't already. Um, through Dentrix eServices, the claims should just be automatically processing now. Your reports will be coming back as successful with attachments, with the claims, with everything. Um, now, the only delays you're going to face really at this point are going to be for those insurance companies that use or used change to process their payments, to receive the claims, to act as their lockbox, to process payments, to send out EOBs or EOPs, process their ERAs and EFT payments. 
that's where there is now a slowdown because while some of them have already made a switch to another company to get offices paid, some of them are still just in a holding pattern. That's right. So we have to just wait and see um, what what's going to happen <laughs> when, when they're going to switch. I know, you know, Giha and Guardian and there's a couple others. Actually, Colleen Huff is has a list of all the insurance companies that used change for their payment processing and then she has like what the status is of oh they switched to this one and they have switched to this one or there is no update they are just holding and if they're just holding that means those checks from that company you know kaiser permante are not going to be coming you're just not going to they're not processing any payments right now. It's just not going to happen. So yeah, <laughs> we're just we're just waiting for that. Um, is Vine able to be used on multiple computers? Absolutely. Um, I mean, we use it in conjunction with a number of our clients. They use it on the front desk. We use it on the computer we remote into. I, I don't know who told you one computer until. That, that, I, I might know her that. That came so normally okay. when we do an onboarding, they'll we'll ask them how many workstations do you want to process right. claims from, and we'll do that with our abbreviated onboarding. We're saying okay. like we can get you set up on one right now, and I got to get on to the next thousand customers that are waiting to get up set up on one computer. Ooh, right. So we yeah. have created all these do-it-yourself um, guides for doing it, but there's no reason why you can't install it. Quite frankly, on any machine on um, on the network that needs to process claims. Right, right. And and again, understandable. I mean, you're doing a thousand people a day instead of 50, you know, or a hundred or whatever, 10, 10 to 20 times the number of offices you would normally onboard in a day, you have to do an abbreviated version. Right. But remember, the important thing at that moment was get claims sent so cash flow doesn't die. Right. And I'm still getting calls from offices saying our cash flow is dead. Why are our collections? We collected 78. We normally collect 98%. Relax. Next month, you'll collect 128%. It's right. just, just the cycle of things. Um, who has that list again? Colleen Huff. I will put a link to her website because um, actually I I – Love Colleen. We've talked for for years online. She actually is one of the speakers who's going to be joining me at Accelerate. Um, so May 9th and 10th in Indianapolis, I'm actually speaking at an event that Vine puts on every year called their Accelerate event. So Teresa Duncan, Colleen Huff, Ashley Bond, I know Devon Banks, I will be speaking there. Um, you know, and it's, it's just a, a real, you know, day and a half of dental billing and increasing your collections and your efficiency and, you know, tons of great information that is, uh, May 9th and 10th in Indianapolis at the Conrad hotel, which is a very nice hotel. Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, so, you know, if you are able to, please, please, please join us at Accelerate. I will in the follow-up email and then also in the comment section of the live video, I will post a registration link for the Accelerate event. Come out, visit me, visit Teresa, visit Colleen, visit Ashley, all the other great speakers that are going to be there. Um, you know, it's going to be a going to be a great day. But I mean, Steve, do you have? I know. We're running over here. Do you have anything else that you want to add before we sign off? No, listen, I, I mean, I think you, you've certainly be, been terribly gracious here. I, I really appreciate it. And just, you know, the reminder that everyone's doing their best to, to try and solve this situation quickly. Um, quickly. Uh, maybe just the, the one point I wanted to make is we scramble to bring on instant resources, whether it's be temps, hiring, um, fractional resources, but we also put a lot of effort into our passive support services like chat, callback support, and, and email support. And so, you know, the one thing, and it's not just us, but I think pretty much everyone, if, if, if you're, it's not urgent and you can move it to a, a passive 
uh, conversation. Those are things like if you have a question about a claim status, let's chat about it because our chat agents can handle, you know, three to five concurrent conversations right. because, you know, the office staff has to check someone out and there's a pause. And while there's that pause in the conversation, they're helping another client. Like if, if we can work together to find ways to, to interact besides sitting in a call queue for four hours until, until uh, someone is available, um, I, I think we're, we're doing everyone a, a favor by, by being flexible here. Absolutely. I mean, listen, we spend enough time on hold waiting for insurance companies to pick up. Use the live chat function. You know, (sighs) it's going to be so much quicker. And like you said, you know, a live chat rep typing can answer three, four or five different offices all at one time because you're right. It's going to, oh, well, what was the claim ID number? And then there's that two minutes while you have to go in and find it and copy and paste it into the chat right. well, they could be helping two other offices in that time get to their information so you know we spend enough time on hold use live chat <laughs> as, for any vendor as right. much as you can i wish insurance companies would offer more live chat hey i need to talk about this claim for this patient and why wasn't it paid and why'd you deny that and let me upload a picture of the x-ray now that right. would be wonderful it'll never happen <laughs> but that would be wonderful Maybe. um Maybe <laughs> <laughs> if if you guys are working on it, it'll probably happen. But yeah, we can talk that, when you're out here for accelerate. <laughs> yeah, there, there's other things to deal with first. Um, you know, so again, just you know, please remember, you know, Vine does work with pretty much all of the major. We work with all software. practice management systems um, that. Other than some some of the web systems, it's not right. we don't have the ability to actually get access to claims. I think we'll probably get that opportunity here, as hopefully you know these vendors will will agree that giving their customers choice and flexibility is important. But it works with you know practice works and soft and Mogo and all of the long tail of legacy practice management systems. You can send claim almost all of them. You can send claims with with Vine Trellis. Exactly. So, I mean, it works with just about everybody, like say, except for the the web based ones right now. I think that's going to change because they're going to got They got to move away from exclusivity and you know one choice. But I won't get into won't get into that discussion yeah. again. It's, but that's almost like talking politics, Rick. We'll, <laughs> it, we'll avoid that here. <laughs> it, de- it definitely is. Um, but again, I will you know, post a link to the Accelerate registration form. You can still use promo code, which is just my last name, Garfolo. um, And that'll save you, save you some money on your registration. You know, Steve, I want to thank you for taking the time. I mean, I, like, I know you guys are crazy busy and on extra shifts. So I want to just thank you for taking the time to get information out there and let everybody know, you know, how Vine can help them because you really have been helping me for, you know, my entire career in dentistry. You guys have been helping me. So I really, really appreciate it. Appreciate you taking the time to answer those questions today. Again, as always, everybody, please, please, please don't hesitate. Um, If you do have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out um in the facebook group the dental billing coding and insurance academy message me directly on facebook i'm happy to answer them if you do have eaglesoft just don't forget go to vinedental.com slash eaglesoft reg reg um and you get that kind of step by step like steve said 10 minute 10 minute process of getting everything installed and set up until you are ready to send your claims out 10 minutes later um definitely check that out. Other than that, you know, again, thank you, Steve. Thank you everybody for attending here today. Ask any questions that you have as always, everybody have a fantastic day. Thanks for being here. I will get to the questions later on, um, but have a great day. And I will see you guys tomorrow in the Facebook group for another drive live video. Thanks so much, Rick. Thank you.